What's up guys, we will YouTube here back with another video and welcome to another Looking Into the Future series. Today we are going to be looking at the Burning Nuggler archetype, a fire warrior based archetype from Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy. So this is one of those tier 2 archetypes that Konami like to release alongside the, the support for the tier 1 archetype, namely the Fire Fists. So it has good sides, which is a good start. Also its monsters are all quite varied and their effects are quite varied and they all have very specific purposes. However, in order to balance out the archetype and not to make it broke, they didn't give it any spell or trap card support, and also they made all the effects have you know inherent limitations to like if and when you use them. So for the first monster we have Burning Nuclear Counterblow. He's basically the Kalut of the deck. You can banish him from your hand or your graveyard to boost one of your monster's attack points by 1,000. Uh, pretty good, actually, I have to say. Sending him to the graveyard is also a pretty easy task because you have this guy, Burning Nuclear Headgear. He's basically a foolish burial for the deck, and once returned, he can't be destroyed by battle. He combos extremely well with Burning Nooker Glassjaw, our third monster, a level 4 2000 attack beater, who when targeted for an attack is destroyed, but when he's sent to the graveyard uh, for a card's effect, you can target one Burning Nooker monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Combos really well, as I said, with Headgear, and also with Lavable Chain. Uh, also, it's the reason why you have Foolish Burial on the deck, people are wondering, it's a minus one, but it's not a minus one if you use it with Glassjaw. So that is pretty much the reason. Fourthly, we have Burning Nooker Spark. He is basically a Cyber Dragon for the deck, where if you control another Burning Nuclear monster, you can special summon him from your hand. And you cannot conduct a battle phase for the rest of this turn, so there is his limitation inbuilt. Uh, and finally we have Burning Nuclear Switch Hitter. He is like the Wind-Up Rat, the Scrap Chimera, or whatever you want of the deck. He nets you a plus one instantly when he's normal summoned, because you can special summon another Burning Nuclear monster from your grave. But during that turn, you can't special summon other monsters except for Burning Nuclear monsters. So pretty much you only use the switch hitter if you're going into an XYZ that is of a burning nuclear, you know, variation or whatever. Uh, finally we have two copies on Max C and Gores for consistency. I was going to add other warrior type monsters, I was going to add summoner monks, but I decided to go for a pure burning nuclear build for the moment, just to get used to the deck. Uh, finally, two pots dualities for consistency. Dark Hull, Heavy Storm Monster Reborn, one copy of Reinforcement of the Army, three copies of MST, to get rid of my opponent's pesky back row while I'm actually trying to test out this stupid deck. <laughs> Uh, one copy of the Warrior Returning Alive, because if you use it on Switch Hitter, it's a plus one, uh, amongst other reasons. Uh, one copy of Foolish Burial, again, because if you send Glassjaw, you also net, you don't net a plus, but you get something back for what you, you know, send. As for the traps, I am testing out various types of traps, but uh, for the moment I'm just going with kind of standard traps, apart from the one at the bottom. Solemn Judgment, Solemn Warning. Two bottomless trap holes, two depressants, two torrential tributes, two compulsory evacuation devices, and one pinpoint guard. So pinpoint guard is one of these new traps that I actually like a lot. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, target one level 4 or lower monster in your graveyard, special summon it in face of defense position, and this turn it cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects. So pretty much it guarantees you a level 4 monster from your graveyard, which is protected from everything. Um, it can still be targeted by those things, but if it's being special summoned during your opponent's turn, uh, you know, composing it back to your hand, that's a little bit pointless. And there's a couple of other things. You know, it is susceptible to the likes of mind control, so if you special summon the monster, your opponent can still target it with card effects, and they can still overlay with it and stuff like that. So, you know, you should be careful when you use it, and for that reason, I'm only testing it out on one copy. Uh, this side deck, I wouldn't call much of a side deck, nevertheless. As I said, you can side in Gozens and Rivalry of Warlords. I was also thinking about Marauding Captains, Command Knights, and in fact, what should be here, Valkyrian. Yeah, not Valkyrian. Uh, Valkyrian Knights as well. So I probably won't end up using them though, because I think the pure engine involving just these guys is actually pretty good. As for the extra deck, you have access to virtually every rank 4 XYZ on the planet. So start off with Abyss Dweller, Blade Arbor Ninja, two copies of Burning Nuclear, Lead Blow the Bound Barbarian. So he is a conditional, continuous effect, just like the likes of Wind of Zen Mains, Legendary Six Samurai Shien, or Gachi Gachi Tetsu. And when he detaches an XYZ material uh, by this effect, it gains 800 attack points, so it instantly becomes a 3000 attack beater. It is extremely frustrating to get over this card uh, via battle, um, even via Ally of Justice Cataster, because as soon as Cataster attacks him once, he becomes a 3800 attack monster, and if you can get rid of that Cataster, then your opponent has a serious problem on their hands. So next of all we have Heroic Champion Excalibur, My Stroke the Simony Jin, Burning Nuclear, Cessus the Meteor, some... Uh, Pojo, I believe, are recommending that you run three copies of this card, but honest to god, I don't know when you would ever choose to go into him over a Shockmaster. The one thing that Cestus can do that Shockmaster cannot is get over his M mains in one attack. 
uh, because Shockmaster cannot negate the effects uh, that don't activate, so it can't touch the continuous effect to protect itself from being destroyed. Nevertheless, it's not a bad card, so basically 2500 attack beat stick during either player's battle step, if a burning nuclear monster you control battles an opponent's monster, you can detach and negate the opponent's monster's battling uh, the opponent's battling monster's effects. That is so awkwardly worded on the field until the end of this turn. And if you do, your battling monster can't be destroyed by battle, and your opponent takes any damage you would have taken from the, this battle. So I mean, I guess it's not too shabby if you want to ram, say, a counter blow with zero attack points into something and deal loads of damage if you have the other guy out on the field to protect him. But uh, other than that, I can't really think of many uses that Shockmaster won't be able to provide you with. Post Photon Pop Operative next, uh, and Giant Hand. He reminds me of uh, this boss in Okami, one of the last bosses in Okami, if anyone ever played that game. It's been re-released in HD on the PS3 if anyone's interested. Uh, Heroic Champion Gandiva, Lava Ball Chain, the MVP of the deck. I probably will put a second copy in here because he's just so, so good. So hypothetically speaking, if you have any Burning Luther monster in your graveyard, specifically the likes of Switcher, so let's say, first turn, you normal summon headgear, you send switch hitter, uh, you special summon spar, and you overlay for something. Probably this guy, because he's just great protection. Then the next turn you have the opportunity to go into Lava Ball Chain, or even if you don't have the opportunity to go into, you should always send switch hitter, because uh, you can send glass jaw at a later stage and get switch hitter back to your hand, which is in, which is basically a plus one in the future. So um, it's actually a really good idea to... You know, most people only think of sending things that you can use, like they'd send a counter blow, or they'd send a glass jaw if they had another um, guy in their graveyard already, which is obviously the most useful thing you can do with glass jaw. But um, nevertheless, never be afraid to send any of these guys. Uh, so yeah, level chain, black ship of corn, shockmaster, utopia, and finally a guy that I only found recently called Zubaba General. So he requires two level four monsters, two thousand attack. Once per turn, you can attach one X Y Z material from him and equip one warrior-type monster from your hand to this card, and he gains attack points equal to the attack of the monster equipped. What's great about him is that you can equip two cards to him if you uh, if you manage to survive the turn. What's even better is that you have a variation of attack points in your hand available. Uh, equipping Glassjaw, for example, would be a particularly good move because it would put him up to 4,000 attack points. He would be like a heroic champion Excalibur who keeps his attack points, and who, if you have other monsters in your hand, you can equip and increase his attack points once again. So. Quite interesting indeed, I have to say. But anyway, that's it for the deck profile. Let me know what you think of the deck. If you want me to do any duels with the deck, I'll be sure to do that. And uh, I haven't put duels up in a while. Just because Dueling Network is kind of, I've kind of become a bit cynical with regard to Dueling Network. It's just, uh, I don't find it as enjoyable as I used to. So I'm pretty much in town all the time dueling like, with real people, which is of course pre pre preferable, even. But, uh, so what, do you, what, what deck are you guys going to be using in the next format? That's pretty much what I'm curious to know, and that's what I'm going to be putting up videos about. Um, I put up a series six months ago called, called Answering the Ban List, in which I pretty much took every tier one deck uh, that was viable and put up a deck profile which answered the hits to that list. But in this case, it's pretty much stab windups in the back and ignore everything else because nothing has really changed for any of the other decks, apart from losing a solemn warning, losing a sangin. You know, so Rescue Rabbit might have to adapt a little bit, but other than that, I can't really imagine much else happening. But anyway, guys, I'm going to leave the video there. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as I said, let me know if there's any videos you want me to do. Let me know what decks you guys are going to be running next format, because I think it's going to be an interesting format indeed, since very little actually got hit. I will talk to you guys later. Peace out.